Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to a Thinking Pack episode, what are we, 27? I think we're 27 now. And I figured out what's going wrong with my voice, I think. Um, and if you've been watching previous episodes, it turns out it's dusty in my room. I'm really noticing that right now. And, yeah, I'm allergic to dust, so that would be what the problem is, <laughs> why my voice is having trouble. Anyway, so, welcome back to a Thinking Pack episode, that's all besides the point. What? <laughs> Welcome back to a Thinking Pack episode, that's all besides the point. So what we're going to be doing today is getting back to the point. And the point is finishing up this last bit of code here. So basically, we got this program completely done, this lava turtle here. It waits for lava buckets and it takes it up to the surface, and I'm not really going to explain that this time. So if you want to see more about that, then go check out the previous episode, um, or... Actually, I didn't explain it very well in the previous episodes. Anyways, go go check out some previous episodes somewhere. Um, I have a lot of episodes, and I re-explained it in a lot of different ones. So, yeah, um, if you want to find out more about that. But basically what we're doing right now is we're finishing up this turtle here. We have a system here to go from, to take lava and convert it from a lava lake into lava buckets in the chest here, which this turtle then takes up to the surface. And so that's what we're doing. So as you can see, we got an empty bucket in there, we got a lava bucket in there, and nothing is happening. So this turtle is designed to take the buckets from this place here. So basically, the lava there, we stick it in this tank, which can be done automatically when we have the machines for it, but that we don't yet. So we stick it in this tank. This tank takes it into the fluid loader, which then loads it into this minecart with a tank, and then we can stick a bucket in here and convert it into from liquid lava into lava buckets, and then this turtle takes the lava buckets and puts them in the chest. So that is the idea. So we have a simple program to do today, at least a lot simpler than the previous programs that we've done. So yeah, so it should be a simpler explanation. So I'm going to try to do that. So basically, let me check on the program. So let's call it bucket filler because it fills buckets. Oh, sorry. Edit <laughs> bucket filler. There we go. Okay. And let's save the program, seeing as it needs to be saved. So anyways, so now let's start off this program here. And we got here a few different things that we want to have happen. So we have very simply the first thing we want it to do is check if 
everything's okay, just start dropping buckets because it's going to wind up, otherwise it's going to wind up dropping buckets in the middle of nowhere and we're going to lose buckets. So we want to check three things. Basically, I'm going to make a chest. Did I actually put the crafting table back down here that I thought I had? No, I didn't. So I'm going to put the crafting table back down where I thought I had it in the first place. All right, so we're going to make a chest. There we go. And stick this chest on top of the turtle. So essentially, the empty buckets will go in here. Oh, the chest won't open because there's a block above it. There we go. So the empty buckets will go in here. So the turtle will pick up the empty buckets from there. Fill them up in this hopper cart. Not hopper cart. Fill it up in the tank cart. And then drop the buckets down here for this turtle to pick up. So that's basically the idea. So... What we want here, we want it to do a few different things. So we want it to... Check if the conditions are okay. Check to make sure it hasn't been moved or something. Or one of the chests has been broken or something like that. So the first thing we want it to do is check to see all the chests are there. Then, we want it to grab empty buckets from the above it. We want it to fill up the buckets in the tank cart. And we want it to drop the lava buckets that are full down into the chest below it. And then, I also have a function here correct for extra buckets. Basically, just if something happens to go wrong in the the sinking of what is going on here and everything. It just corrects it, just deals with whatever extra buckets might happen to be around. So, let's get on to it. So, first step we want is we want to check if the conditions are okay. So, we are going to call this function, as may seem quite obvious, conditions okay. So, function, and that's not how you spell function, pressing too many keys again. Function conditions okay. Open bracket, close bracket, end our function down here, and in the middle we're going to type some stuff. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to assume that the conditions are not okay so that it doesn't just randomly start throwing buckets around. We're going to assume the conditions are not okay and then check if they are okay. So, up okay, let's make a variable for that, is equal to false. Front okay is equal to false. And down okay is equal to false. There we go. So we assume all the conditions are not okay until proven otherwise. So we, I also have another variable just to sort of organize things better. Conditions are okay is equal to false. There we go. So that one might make more sense as we go along. So now we got here. Now we start checking. So basically, it does three things, this function. It assumes the conditions are not okay. It checks what the conditions are. And then it sets the conditions to okay if they are in fact okay. So what we got up there is check is assuming that they're not okay. So now the next step is check for information. Is block, and I've done this before, block up and obviously I've forgotten how to type or something <laughs> is block up comma what that's a D what block up equals turtle dot in spect up there we go and if you're wondering what all this does then it's in a previous video somewhere but I'm not really going to explain it here. So is block front. Um, just actually, just in quick summary, this creates two variables: is block up and what block up. 
and it gets it inspects for information for what's above it. Basically, that's simply what's going on. So we want to do that for up, for front, and for down. So is block front what block front is equal to turtle dot inspect that inspects in the front so that's good and then is block down and what block down is equal to turtle that's not how you spell turtle turtle dot inspect down there we go So there we go. So now that checks what the conditions are. So it assumes that the conditions are not right. Then it checks what they are. And then it, we have to do some evaluation on that because this we need to connect the two things, basically. So if... Where was I? Okay. If is block up. So basically what I'm doing this line is I'm checking if there is a chest above because there could be a block that's above us that turns out to be a stone or something like that. So if is block up okay, so here's a thing. If you try if you just do an if statement and check what block is above us, then I've ran into the problem before, and I think it's in this situation, that you say, what block is above us? Well, if there's no block above you, then it'll crash your program. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking if two things are true. First thing I check, and it checks them in order. So the first thing I check is, is there a block above us? And then if there is no block above us, then it, it knows that they're not both true, so it doesn't bother to check the second one, so it doesn't crash the program. So if is block up and what and and then we want it to have something evaluated. So we want it to evaluate something first. So it needs to know is there a block above us and is that block a chest? So and is what block up dot name equal to minecraft colon chest that's the name of the chest there we go so is there a block above and is that block a chest so if there is not a block above then it doesn't even bother to check if it's a chest because it knows that this and here it knows that this and can't be true if the first one isn't true so hopefully that makes sense but anyways we're gonna move on so it checks those things is there a block above us and is it a chest and then if it is oh, and we want to end the if statement as well so if it is a chest above us then set up okay to true that's not how you spell true true there we go set up okay to true and print just so that I like do this so that I have some idea of what's going on and print where were I? was I okay there print up okay there we go so that's that um, and I'm gonna indent it so that it is more clear to be seen so there we go. So that's our first if statement. So essentially what has happened, we've checked, we've assumed that up is not okay, that the conditions are not right. Then we checked what are the conditions, and then we evaluated. And if it turns out that there is a chest above, then we're like, all right, it's okay. So that's basically what we're doing. And we just simply need to do that two more times. And hopefully I'm going to type faster this time. I'm not going to try to explain at the same time so that we can get the typing done faster.
So here we go. So, and I just realized I can't see my recorder right now. I better check it's actually recording. Yes, it is recording. That's good. That would not be good if it wasn't recording. So, okay. So, now this is the same thing, only checking down. So if is block down and and then evaluate what block down dot name is equal to minecraft colon chest there we go then down is down okay is true that's not how you spell true true get my fingers in the right order and print so that if it gets stuck if I type something wrong or whatever then we know where we're at print down okay there we go and end that if statement and one more to check front so if is block front and evaluate what block front dot name is equal to okay so here's this gets a little bit more complicated so we've got here we need two pieces of information because this thing doesn't identify itself as a chest as you might imagine because it's not a chest it is a whoops clicking on things it is a tank cart but unfortunately railcraft doesn't identify things the same way so that's from the railcraft mod but it doesn't identify things the same way as as usual so let's open the lua prompt and let's i'm going to show you what it says it is so tur turtle dot inspect there we go so true means that there is something in front of it and it sees the track it doesn't actually see the cart it can interact with the cart but it doesn't see the cart for some strange reason it sees the track so we need to check is it a track wait a minute hang on what because well okay what I've got written here um, is not matching what I'm seeing there oh you know why it's because I was not checking the same oh okay 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 so when I built this test program, I was not actually checking the tur the cart. I don't think I was checking. I was not checking the track either. I was checking for so that's a fluid loader. I was checking for a fluid unloader that I had underneath the cart when I was setting up this test program. So that's a thing. So basically, what we've got here is a dilemma. I don't actually know how to detect this cart. Let's give it a shot. So, okay. It detects the track. So, railcraft track metadata equals zero. That might be important. That I don't know if that makes a difference as to is there a cart on the track or not. I don't know if the metadata changes, so we're going to check if the metadata is right, too. So in this if statement, we're checking, is it true that there's a block? Is the name railcraft track? And is the metadata equal to zero? Okay, so let's give that a shot. There we go. Bucket filler. Um... Let's try edit bucket filler. That, that would help. Okay. 
So, so here is block front. Let's correct that to front. Is block front. And what block front dot name is equal to? Let's see if I remember this right. Railcraft colon track. If I got my capitals right, and if I got all that, then we should be good. Otherwise, it will just say the conditions aren't okay. And so then I'll just have to check it. So, check if it is a track, and let's check the metadata as well, just to see, just so that we don't get it wrong there either. So, and what block front dot meta, that's not an M. Let's try typing meta data. Metadata is equal to 5. And close bracket, then. Okay, so this, this line here checks, is there a block in front? And what is the name of that block in front? Is it railcraft colon track? And what is the metadata of that block in front? Is it not 5, sorry, it was 0, wasn't it? It was 5 on the fluid unloader that I had in my test world. Okay, so I think we're... Oh, no, we're not good to go. We have to actually finish the if statement. So if all that is true, then front OK is... Oh, my cursor. Okay. Front OK is equal to true and print front OK. So we know that if it doesn't print this line, then there is no... Then we typed it in wrong, basically. <laughs> so I need to indent those so that it looks cleaner, and then let's end this if statement, and there we go. So... Oh, and one more thing. Okay. So those are evaluating if the different places are true or not. And then... Let's see, one more thing here. This basically summarizes the entire thing in one variable. So basically what we want to check here, if. We want to check if up OK, front OK, and down OK are all equal to true. And if they are all equal to true, then the conditions are OK. So let's do that. So if up OK equal to true, true, there we go, if, okay, and I need this in brackets, otherwise it will get confused, so if up okay is equal to true, and front okay is equal to true, and down okay, is equal to true. Then, then that variable that we did before, conditions are okay, is then equal to true. There we go. End that if statement, and that's indented more than I want it to be. And there we go. So now that is our first function done, and we have actually been quite a long time working on this function. Let's see, what do we have left to do still? We have, I need, what functions here? So we got conditions okay, so we know that the conditions are good to go if that function checks out okay, and then we want it to grab the empty buckets from above, fill the buckets, drop the lava buckets, and correct for extra buckets in case something goes wrong. So let's see, how quickly can I do this? Because I would really like to get this done this episode. It has been fun working on this project, but it's about time to move on. It's uh, maybe long past time, some would say. But <laughs> anyways, so we got...
grab empty buckets is our next function. We only want it to grab one empty bucket. So, all right, so here we go. Speed coding, faster than I was doing before, hopefully, if all goes well. So, function, let's call it grab empty bucket. And so it's grabbing from above. Let's add an end to the function. Okay, so tell us which function it's running. Print running. I almost typed ruining. No. Running grab empty buckets. There we go. Oh, no, sorry. Print running grab empty buckets. There we go. Um, and it's, whoops, I'm doing things on my screen, typing all the wrong buttons. Obviously, I've forgotten how to type or something. I don't even know what's going on. So, print, okay, and then repeat. We have a repeat loop here. This is basically the similar idea to everything that we've done in the past. If turtle dot get item count is equal to, that's not equals, there we go, equal to zero, then turtle dot suck up, I don't know if that's a function we've used before, um, suck up one item, so, so there's three different functions, there's suck up, suck down, and just suck, which sucks frontwards, it just basically, it picks up an item out of whatever chest is nearby, or just straight off the ground if there is no chest. So that's what that does. And then end that if statement. So it just basically, if there is no item in, in the turtle's slot, we're only dealing, dealing with one slot here, and if there is no item in the slot, then suck a new item from up above the turtle end that if statement and run I need to run a check item so basically I need to check the item to see what it is however that it, having to write that code every single time is a lot of work to do so I'm going to add a function for it. So let's until let's finish this function off until item count is equal to 1. There we go. And there should be the end of the function. There we go. Down there. So check item. So it will not know what that means because there is no function called check item. So let's just quickly make a check item function. Function check item. And in this function, we want it to do something very specific. We want it to get information about the item that is in the slot. So check item, and let's define what our item is. So an item is turtle, it's the information that you get when you run turtle.getItemDetail. And so now that we know what an item is, we need to know item count. And this is very similar to what I've done in the past, so I'm not really explaining it this time. turtle.getItemCount. There we go. So now we know what the item is. We know we've counted how many items we have. And if item count, item count is equal to, that's not equals, equal to one, then do this so that we don't have the code running without an item so that it doesn't crash our program. If item count is equal to one, then pr 
print item dot name is, and then I want it to tell us, here's a thing you can do, I don't know if I've done this before, here's a thing you can do with printing things. So, in the quotes here, that's a piece of text, but then if you use two dots, you can add to it, and you can add any kind of value you want. So, item dot name, that's from the variable that we just made before. So, now when it prints to the screen, it will say, item dot name is, and then it will give us the num the name of the item from the variable that we've got. Hopefully that makes some sense. I'm kind of explaining it really, really fast. So, yeah, so that's the thing. So now we've got our check item function. So basically, all we have to do now, later on in the code, is type in check item, and then it checks what's the detail on the item, and how many items are there. So that's the idea. So now down here, you can see check item, it checks for there being an item, and how, like, how many there are, it checks what the information is on it, all, all that kind of stuff. So this function, quickly in summary, grabs an empty bucket, so it, if there is no bucket in the turtle, because we want to keep this simple, we want to only deal with one slot, so if turtle.getItemCount, if there is no item in the slot that it's selecting, then suck one item from above, and then check for items, check if it's a bucket, different things like that, check item, and keep repeating this stuff until item count equals one. So like for example, if, oh and you know what, I should put a little bit of a delay. So, os.sleep, okay, um, for like one second. So basically this is just simply, until item count equals one, that's just simply saying, check upwards, like, try to get a bucket from above, but if there's no buckets in the chest above because they're off at the quarry or something like that, then wait until... Eh? Wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I think I did something very, very wrong here. No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just missed the fact that check... That item count, I think I'm going too fast now. <laughs> I missed the fact that item count is in this check item function. I was like, wait, I have no item count variable. Yeah, I do. It's just in the other function. So anyways, so that's the thing. So hopefully I explained that. So that's what, what it's doing. And now all we have to do, now we have check the conditions are okay, grab an empty bucket. We want it to fill the bucket. We want it to drop the bucket and we want it to correct for extra buckets. So, let's see, what have I got for fill bucket and drop lava bucket? Fill bucket here... Oh wow, these get... every function gets simpler from this point on. And then, we are finally done except for building the pipe. And yeah, so that's a thing. So, all right, so three more functions to go. Let's get onto it. So, new function. Oh, and I just covered up my notes. Ha ha. Okay, function fill bucket. There we go. So that's the next thing. So we now have a bucket in the inventory if it has gone this far. And now we want it to fill the bucket. So, function fill bucket end the function down here. In this function, we want it to print running fill buckets so that we know what it's doing, so print um, brackets running fill bucket. There we go, end our print line. So now we know when we're trying to figure out what's going wrong, <laughs> if it goes wrong, we know where we are. And then repeat, we start another repeat loop, repeat, and then we want it to do turtle dot drop. So we want it to basically, when this function starts, we know it has an item in the inventory. We want it to drop it in front of it so that it goes into the cart there. So drop the item, os.sleep one second, so 
pause for one second. That should give the bucket enough time to fill. And then we need an if statement down here. If turtle dot get item count is equal to what does that say? Zero. Okay. <laughs> if turtle dot get item count is equal to zero, then so if there's no item in the turtle, because the only reason there would be an item in the turtle would be if the bucket didn't go into the the cart for some reason, like if the cart were all already full. So, but anyway, so if there is no item in the turtle, then turtle dot suck. There we go. And then we need after that if statement we need to then we're nearly done this function. Run our check item function again. Check item. There we go. So that gives us the information that we want. And print item count is so this tells us what so basically what I'm doing with all these print lines I think I explained it already but basically is that I'm count there we go let's spell that correctly I'm basically keeping track of all the things that are going on that might go wrong and so that I can open the screen if the the program freezes for whatever reason I can open the screen and see what has just been happening that's the idea with all this stuff that I'm doing so print that okay and repeat this thing until and then we want to check two things we want to check item count. So basically what we're doing here, and I'm typing the wrong button again. Basically what we're doing here is this function is designed to fill the bucket. And the, the way this function should end is with having a full bucket in the inventory. So check if the item count is equal to 1. And if the item name is equal to minecraft colon lava underscore bucket there we go that is the end of this function so we got our fill buckets function so now we can fill buckets so now the next thing we want it to do what we have left drop lava bucket down below the turtle, and then correct for extra buckets in case any extra buckets happen to make their way into the turtle here. So, drop lava buckets is the next function that we got here. So, let's do that function drop lava bucket. There we go add an end to the function, and print running drop lava bucket, same thing as before, running drop lava bucket, and let's add our quotes to make it a string, and our brackets, and there we go, <coughs> excuse me, item dot turtle dot no, 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 not dot. Okay. So we need a variable here. Item equals... So what I'm doing here is... What am I doing here? <laughs> That's not good if I don't even know what I'm doing in my own program. Um, I am doing here... So check the item detail. And... If the name of the item is a bucket, 
then drop it down. Okay, so this is that's basically what I'm doing. So I'm checking the detail on the item, and then if if the item is a bucket, then I drop it down. So item equals turtle dot get item detail. There we go. And then if item dot name is equal to Minecraft colon lava not capital bucket then turtle dot drop down and end and let's just indent this so that it's easier to see there we go so now we got our drop lava buckets function so that just simply checks what the information is on the item and if it is a lava bucket then it drops it down and the reason I do that check is just because in case the sinking gets wrong or something we might wind up with something else in the inventory so just might as well check that I'm not really sure that that function was thought through very well, so <laughs> anyways, that's the thing. So, and then one more function to do. So that was drop lava bucket. The last function is correct for extra buckets. So if the sinking should get wrong somehow, if we get our buckets out of sync or something, then there's two possibilities that we could get. We could get that it stuck an extra bucket into the cart here, and so then it's got an extra bucket floating around in it. It could be that it has an extra bucket floating in the inventory for some reason, so all we want it to do is suck from that cart and drop down, just to fix those two possible problems. So function, and let's call it correct for, and that's a long name, correct for x Extra buckets. There we go. End. And then simply turtle dot suck. Let's get our brackets in properly. And then turtle dot drop. Not detect. Turtle dot drop down. There we go. So that is the completed program, except you may be noticing there's one thing missing, which is telling it to actually run the code, all of those functions that we've just defined, because that's what we're basically doing, is we're defining the functions, so we need it to, we need to say, okay, all those functions that we just defined, run them. So, well, true because we want it to be infinite. So as long as true is true, which is always, then do this. <coughs> Excuse me. And we want it to do all of those functions, basically. So, conditions okay. So run the conditions okay function, so check if the conditions are okay. Grab empty bucket there we go fill bucket there we go drop lava bucket there we go and what are the what's the last name okay the long one correct for extra bucket. There we go. And there we go. So that is our completed program. So that is a new record, I would say. That's an entire program completed in one episode, although the episode was like twice as long as I was hoping for it to be. <laughs> but anyways, that's besides the point. So, yeah, so let's just test that this runs. 
And one more thing we have to do is tell it to run it on startup. So edit startup. So it start up. So it runs the startup program on startup. And I forget how I did this. I already I always have to look this up. So edit startup. Let's see. I'm not going to bother with the print line. So shell dot run is what it is, and then the name of the program. So shell shell dot run and in here we need the name of the program which is bucket filler bucket filler there we go so this should be good to go so now we can restart the turtle and bucket filler 17 close bracket expected that's to be expected. First time we run the code, it kind of breaks on us. Oh, wait. It says 17. <laughs> That's way up here. So, nearly done, and then we're done and ready to move on to the next thing, basically. 17. Did I not close my... No, I didn't close my brackets. Okay, there we go. You might have seen that long before I did. <laughs> but anyways... 17, attempt to index a nil value. Hmm. Bug fixing. Edit bucket filler, 17. The same line that we got stuck on before. If is block front. And, okay. What block front dot name is equal to railcraft colon track. And what block front dot did I spell it right? Metadata. What block front dot metadata? And back here, what block front dot name? Hmm. I am not sure what happened here. Um, one thing I should check. It would make it easier if we could just simply do this on the thing up there. So let's let's check that. Is there any way to keep it from throwing the lava down below it? I don't know. Um Okay, you know what? I actually oops, I'm picking up lava. I don't want that. So stick these back in. So, I don't actually know what to do about this. So, basically what the problem is... It's saying a nil value. So basically, something that it's checking here is... Can't be checked. So... I'm gonna... Actually, I'm gonna do a test. See what it says. So, Lua... So we need, so basically I'm going to test, I'm going to make two variables like we had, and then try the dot name and the dot metadata and see how all that works and all that kind of stuff. So, so let's see, so let's just call a variable x equal to turtle dot inspect. There we go. Oh, sorry. Um, it's. I need two variables, x and let's say y. So let's check what x is, true. Let's check what y is, y is that big long thing. So y dot metadata is zero, and y dot, whoops, didn't mean to press that button, y dot name. Okay, so it should be good to go. So I do not know why it is giving an error. Let's try that. Let's try restart and run it again. 17. Attempt to index a nil value. Hmm. That is a good question. Edit bucket filler. 17, 17, 17, 17, 17 is up here. 
17. Did one of her things not go right? Oh, you know what? Maybe I spelled the variable name wrong up here. So this is... This is the front one. Is block front. Oh, yes, I did spell it. Okay, there we go. That's a simple fix. That's really very nice. Capital R down to lowercase r. Save. Exit. And restart and run it. There we go. We have our running program. And I'm going to grab a empty bucket. I'm going to grab a lava bucket and make it empty. And I'm going to grab an empty bucket. Two empty buckets. And I'm going to stick them up top and demonstrate how this works. So this one is currently waiting to receive a bucket. So we should see this one is running. We should see that I stick the bucket in the top here two buckets, and it fills them. There you go. One bucket. It might have actually... Oh, there we go. Two buckets. And now that turtle's off, and the extra bucket is in here. There we go. We finally have our project finished, except... Oh, wait. One more thing, one more thing that I forgot, which I'm going to do next episode. We have the programming side of the project done, but I forgot we actually need a a pipe to get it from the surface back down underground. So yeah, so we'll work on that. And do we actually have... I just realized, do we have a way to actually load the quarry up on the surface? I don't know. That is a good question. You know what, actually? We could probably do that with pipes. I was going to do a turtle method, but we don't even have the iron for that. We already have the turtle made, I think, but I need a hopper as well. And if I can get up this jump, there we go. And, okay, so our turtle should be arriving momentarily, unless it it arrived and left already. Okay. So, okay, so two things we need. We need a pipe. We need a way to... Oh, yeah, we don't have the turtle made because of some reason. I don't remember why. But we need to get the buckets from this chest into the quarry. And, whoops, sorry, I'm <laughs> just closing my, my notes. Okay, so we need a way to get buckets from this chest into the engines. We need ways to get buckets from the engine, empty buckets from the engine out, and send them back downstairs to where the, the turtles are. And, yeah... But, basically, that is a matter of next episode. So, next episode, we're going to work on that, and I just realized my inventory is full of all kinds of stuff. Well, I realized that earlier, but I forgot. <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah, I'm going to empty my inventory before I lose everything again, and then we're going to attach some pipes, because they're a lot simpler. So, get some pipes going between the chest and the, 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 the engine, and the stuff downstairs as well. And... Yeah, and then, next episode, that shouldn't take very long, and then we got some more changing things up again a bit, so we are making, we're making that pipe, and then we're gonna, I'm thinking we're gonna watch the quarry finish, basically, I have an idea, we'll see if it works out, but I have an idea for a time lapse, I have some music that I wrote for it, basically. And so, so it's sort of a modified version. It's a remix on the intro. So, yeah, so I'm going to use that. So, so anyway, so we're going to time-lapse the quarry with some nice music, watch the quarry do its thing down there, and we're going to finish getting the pipes up and running and different things like that. So... Yeah, and then from that place, then we're going to move on to Mind Chem. And by the way, I do have a new intro coming soon. I don't think I'm going to put it on this episode or not, but... But yeah, so pretty soon I have a new intro coming as well. So that's exciting. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And this is Handy Andy signing off. And sorry about the extra, extra long episode this time, but anyways, we got that program done, so we're just about exactly there.
to be done. We just need that pipe. So, yeah. So, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and see you later. Bye-bye.